Hey everyone, you know, I really don't have a whole lot to say right now, but I have to do some pen maintenance today. And that is I'm cleaning out, I'm making decisions, I'm cleaning out some of the pens that I am not currently using because I don't want them to sit there with a bunch of ink and get dried out. And I am also eating dinner. So I have this incredible concoction of kale, chard, broccoli, garlic, onions, and some bacon. So this is my dinner. It's actually maybe not the best thing to be eating when I'm cleaning out pens because it's greasy. I should get a napkin. using. I have a couple of things going on right now. I already started cleaning out one of them. I have the Goulet Pen Flush, which I like to use if I'm not, if I'm uh, cleaning them to out completely or changing inks. That just gives a little extra like clean up. So I have that here in this little tin cup. This is my, the uh, ink scrugs, scrubs, what do you call it? <laughs> Whatever, I the waste. That's the waste. And then I have uh, some filtered water here. And then I have a cup of tea. <laughs> and some ink that I don't need to use right now, so we'll put that aside. So anyways, the first one I'm cleaning out is this beautiful wall signature pen. This is a wood body. And this was made in the 1920s, 1930s. I don't know what the specific date is. It's an italics nib so that it, it has also known as a stub nib. It has like a broader uh, writing. So anyways, I've already rinsed it a couple of times with pen flush, but I think I'm gonna do a little more. And I probably will get rid of using this cup because it, it, it doesn't, I don't know. I feel like some of the flush is being wasted a little bit. This is um, a what is called a lever fill pen. So there's like this little rubber sack on the inside of the body and then this lever here. So when you open the lever up, it expels whatever is in there, the air, the ink, and then you pull it and then it sucks up like a vacuum. Uh, the ink or the pen flush. So after I do the pen flush, then I do this with the filtered water. And then I'll let them sit out and dry. And basically I just do this until I don't see the ink anymore. And right now, so it's running pretty clear, but there's still like a little hint of whatever ink was in there. It's a blue ink, um, so. Gotta get that all nice and clean up. And then after that's done, I will uh, basically let it sit out and dry. I will like wipe this part off. And so I'll leave it uncapped. And I'll just set it down right there. So make sure that nib dries. I should make these. These are not being cleaned out right now. Uh, the next one that I'm going to be cleaning out is this Schaefer. This is a an old Schaefer flat top pen with a balance cap. So it's kind of a, a mod podge. It's a beautiful little pen though, and um, a really nice writer. I'm just gonna like record for the sake of recording, because I won't be using these pens for a little while. Um, so I might as well, this is also a lever filler. I can leave it posted. Oh no, it'll be a little hard to get access to the lever, so there's, Anyways, I might as 
we'll just chat with you all about how I got into collecting vintage fountain pens, because that's the thing. Um, that's part of my life. So I guess it goes way back. Like I said in my last video, I have been journaling for a very long time. In fact, I have been journaling basically since I could hold a pen in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and that was always something that was really encouraged by my mom. And what she would do, she would buy like a little journal and every day she'd put the date at the top and then when I was really little and I couldn't read and write, I would uh, draw little pictures, daily pictures. And then I would tell her about the picture and she would write like a little paragraph about what, that, what I was drawing and what was going on in my head. And then of course I started to learn to read and write and so those journals I would start to add in, incorporate my own words and then it just went from there and I've been journaling ever since basically. <laughs> And I have journals, um, at least here with me at my house, from that start in 2001. Um, the ones from my childhood might be with her, or maybe they're... We've moved so many times, and there was like a couple of storage units that unfortunately we uh, had to abandon and leave behind. So um, there might be... <laughs> Some of my really old journals from when I was a little baby, little kid, um, spread out in the country, around the, around the country. Um, so anyways, journaled a lot in high school. Uh, I still have all those journals. Um, it wasn't until more recently, I think within the last maybe five years ago, I discovered Moleskines, Moleskines, Moleskine, I don't know. I've heard them, I've heard it pronounced all sorts of ways. Moleskin is what I usually say. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so uh, for some reason that size and like the straightforwardness of the binding and the different color options and the paper, I really gravitated towards them. I really liked it. And that kind of became my, my staple for a long time. And that was like, a, that changed the way I journaled. Uh, because prior to that, I wasn't necessarily journaling daily, but I was journaling enough. But it would take me a while. I'd like take a whole year to finish a journal. Uh, and then the Moleskines happened and it started getting less and less where I'd like, maybe it would take six months to finish a journal and then all of a sudden four months. Um, so anyways, I then started writing with, I bought a little fountain pen on Amazon. It's a, it was a really great little workhorse fountain pen. It's an aluminum body, Muji, which is a Japanese brand. Um, and that really changed, that changed it all for me. That changed writing in a really big way. And I will show that pen to you because I still have it. Oops, I didn't mean to cap this quite yet. Um, it is this little baby. So this was my Muji pen with the fine nib that I found on Amazon. It uses cartridges. And uh, that really, really changed my journaling. I actually was into dip pens when I was in elementary school because we went to Williamsburg, Virginia as a class field trip. And I bought this little like dip pen kit you know, that came in a little box and it came with some nibs and uh, some ink and I was obsessed with it. Anyways, when I got back into that sort of pen, uh, when I bought my little Muji pen there, um, I realized that using fountain pens, you actually need to consider paper quality a lot more than you would with a ballpoint pen. And then I discovered the Rodia paper, which is made by, I think it's Clairefontaine paper, which is a French paper. Um, I really liked those for a long time. Oh, it was a good journal. Really enjoyed my pen. I wrote with it. That little Muji pen, I used that for like three years. And that was the only pen I ever used. Unless if I was like signing a receipt at a grocery store or something. Um, 
But that, yeah, that one lasted a really long time. I had always in the back of my head, like, really wanted to get into vintage fountain pens, but every time I considered it, I was overwhelmed by all the choices, and then, like, do I want a restored one, or do I want to do it myself, or how much money do I want to spend, and is it going to write, and, you know, all these different things. So, at the beginning of this year, or last year, 2018, um, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take the plunge and actually pursue this like vintage fountain pen journey. Um, one sec. I think, I think this one's already been cleaned like badly. I think I did a bad job. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do like a couple water rinses. Um, so I finally got into, to, took the plunge, um, and bought my first vintage fountain pen, which I will show you what that is in just a moment. And this, I was really lucky because I actually found it at a local store. It's an art supply store that I've been going to for years. Uh, and I remember in the past hoping to buy fountain pens there because that seemed like the most likely place. Uh, and at the time they didn't have those things. And then I went there to get a journal because they sell the Rodillas. And suddenly there was this huge fountain pen, vintage fountain pen collection. And also they sell modern ones too. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing because I can actually like go in and see them in person and test them out. And so my very first vintage fountain pen came home with me that day. It's a Schaefer oversized balance pen. It's still one of my absolute favorite pens. Uh, we've been on quite the journey together. Um, I have written a tremendous amount with it and it's like not what I had in mind for what I wanted my first vintage fountain pen to look like but for some reason I was just really drawn to it and I really liked the way it felt in my hands and I really 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 liked the way it wrote. Um, so this is the pen. It's this weird, awkward, torpedo-shaped, bulky, um, kind of nondescript, not very flashy fountain pen. <laughs> but I was in love with it, and it's still to this day one of my absolute favorite pens. I'm not going to clean this one out because this is one that I still really enjoy writing with. But this one actually broke. When I, before I sliced off the pen loop on my, my traveler's notebook, I had carried it around everywhere. This was what I what I did. The pen would hang out right there. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, and one day I was at a, a doctor's office and I took my my wallet out to pay, and I dropped it. And it landed in such a way that it broke my beautiful Schaefer oversized balance pen in half. And I cried. I was devastated. That was like really, really sad for me. It was a very sad day. <laughs> so then I was able to like glue it back together, kind of sloppily, glued it back together and um, and then, let's see, this one, this is just a little cheapy. This is a Caveco Sport. I'm going to just throw this cartridge away because I just never use it and I'll just do that. Soak it in there, and that'll be enough to clean that one out. Um, it's the really cute, like little shape of them, but mm, not a fan. Um, those ones, I will leave. I might. Hmm. I don't want to clean any of those out yet. <laughs> These are the other ones that I. These are ones that I really like to use, so I think I will not clean those out yet. I might, I'll just go ahead and clean out this other Quebeco. I have two little Quebeco sports. Um, this one has a international like uh, cartridge filler, so you don't have to use regular cartridges. This one's refillable. So I will just go ahead and clean that one real quick. And actually, I'm out of the pen flush. I'm gonna switch to this file. Where was I? What was I saying? 
what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I glued my Schaefer Oversized Balance Pen back together, but I was like, I have no idea if I'll ever be able to fill this up again, which is, you know, a tragedy, but I will write with it until the ink runs dry because I love this pen and I will never find another one like it because vintage fountain pens, each one is really unique. I could buy the same exact model with the same exact nib made in the same exact year and it would write very differently. And part of that is because the nibs are made out of gold and so they, you know, gold is a soft material and what happens over time, the more you write with it, the more it like tunes to your writing style, the way you hold the pen, the way you write. Um, so they become really personal and they become like an extension of who you are as a writer, which is part of the appeal. And also just like the fact that they all each have their own very individual personalities and individual quirks. Um, so anyways, I went back to Saranoff because I was like, I need another uh, well, uh, Schaefer Oversized Balance Pen. He had another one. I tried it and I was like, no, not the same. Uh, I, I wanted mine, my original, my very first vintage fountain pen. And I was talking to the gentleman there and I was like, you know what? Do you think this could be repaired? And he was like, yeah, as a matter of fact, it can. And so I left it with him. He has a friend that restores vintage fountain pens. And so he actually um, I fused the body back together again, so kind of like soldered. He knows the material that it was originally made out of and he was able to work with it and like melt it back together again, which is amazing. So now I can refill it and reuse it and I am so happy. But after that day, of course, I sliced the pen loop off of my traveler's notebook right here because I was like, oh, not taking that chance again. Um, that's just too, too risky. And in fact, it made me like want to reconsider traveling with vintage fountain pens because these things are, are not cheap um, and they're really special. And um, yeah, I just, I just, it got a little scary. So now when I go on longer trips, I travel with these cuties. These are the Twisby Eco pens and I really like them. And they're, they're like, they're 28 bucks, uh, which I know for a pen sounds crazy when you are, <laughs> if you are just accustomed to buying like toss away pens. Um, but this one you use a lifetime. I'm writing with fountain pens that are over, that are like a hundred years old and they're still functioning as pens. That's really incredible. And I think that's like such a better way of, of, of participating in the world when you can like, um, I knew that was gonna happen. I need some more water. I'm gonna let that soak. <laughs> when you can reuse something over and over and over and over, it was made to last. The materials are made from good materials. Uh, the vintage pens are all made from wonderful materials, high quality, handmade. You know, it's like uh, un unbeatable. I'm getting another jar of water. I have one more pen that I want to clean out. I think, I think. Um, where am I? Probably like all over the place because I'm like doing many different things all at once. Oh yeah, the Twisby Ecos. I, for like a longer trip, I take a, an inexpensive pen that I can just throw in my bag that I know will be a great writer, um, that will write consistently, that will give me tons of writing um, because of the ink capacity on these little Twisbees is ridiculously good. Mm. I think this is the last one that I have that I'm going to clean out today. This is a Malim, a brass barrel. It's beautifully made, but it's really heavy. So I just rarely ever write with it. And this one also has like an international refillable cartridge. 
So I'm just gonna, this will be a little tricky. It's hard to clean out these cartridge pens, these cartridges rather, sometimes. Um, what are they saying? Oh, well, anyways, so <laughs> as you might imagine, my pen collection has grown quite a bit over the year. Um, and now I have many fountain pens in my collection. Most of, well, maybe it's about half and half at this point with the modern pens and the vintage. I prefer the vintage but it is a lot of responsibility and you do have to be really conscientious of how you travel with them and, and what you do with them. They're great writers. You can write with them every day and I do. Um, but they're, they're not cheap. So, and they're, they're not like replaceable. It's not like a ballpoint pen, every single one, every single ballpoint Pilot Pen writes exactly the same, you know, whatever model you're using. Um, these vintage fountain pens are not not so. But anyways, I think I'm gonna end this video here because I don't even remember what I've said. This is a long video. I rambled on and on and on and on. I'll do more uh, things in the future if you guys are curious about uh, the fountain pens that I'm using and you want to see my collection, um, I'd be happy to do that. So thank you guys for watching. When I finish up <laughs> my, uh, my dinner, um, clean up. So I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs>